ông quay cho ông em được gặp cả một tổ cái ca để tiếp thị sản ca nâng đầu với ca chuyển từ đồ mình chuẩn bị về chợ cổ pế nâng bay mình to xây sản than bật mình chọc cái chuyện thị đến đầu là bọc luôn hay xong lực tha xong lúc mình chuẩn bị về chợ cổ pế xong bật thòi là bươn mà tay ai chơi lươn về quân mà អរគុណលោកប្រធានខ្ញុំនឹងយើតជាងមួយបន្តិចសូមជម្រាបសួរលោកប្រធានលោកសេចចៅក្រមមេធាវីសាកទីញ្ញាទាំងអស់ um, I will continue um, nevertheless, Mr. Pre uh, Hello. Um, Mr. President, before the, the lunch break um, this morning, uh, we were speaking um, about imperialist ambitions of Vietnam and, and the failed coup in 1976. I will now continue with our presentation. Vietnam's uh, collaborators, Mr. President, the CPK, were not deterred of the Nazi Instead, we prompted them to intensify their efforts. And from late ចាប់តាំងខ្ញុំឆ្នាំ Night and indeed, in the prosecution, the prosecution, ពលរដ្ឋបាលសិស្សិតសិស្សិតសិស្សិតសិស្សិតសិស្សិតសិស្សិតសិស្សិតសិស្សិតសិស្សិតសិស្សិតសិស្សិតសិស្សិតសិស
ถ้าพอตังระบบสัตว์บานกอมตรอสรอบคืนนี้สำนองเรื่องระบบนุนชีสสำหรับเลยมาแฮดมวยเซนเตียนนี้คือจะกาปิดสมิสเปรสเซนต์วอร์ดิสเดชเนลุกเซชาวครัมสัตว์เซตาพอตังระบบสัตว์เซนนี้คือเชื่อไว้นี่คือเชื่อปรมีนสกิกรรมจิตชราอันระบบเนตเดบานพอดอลสกิกรรมเนตินี้ได้พอดอลปรมีนเชื่อมวยมาเชื่อมดอล To DC or to journalists, or who were interviewed by the enemies of the people, filmmakers, Robert Sambat. These witnesses of the eyewitness first-hand accounts of their direct involvement and could be dated as I will summarize for you. In our brief, we have identified nine witnesses who described ដោយតាមការកម្ពុជាប្រជាធិបតេយ្យនិងចំណុចកំពុងបានកាគឺទីក្រុងភ្នំពេញ ដោយតើទៅវិញ ក្នុងគួរឲ្យជឿជាអំពីលក្ខណៈដែលបានការនេះនឹងនាំតាមដោយ Cutting off streets in and out of the city, and 
already targeted supply warehouses and military material to take over. Third, third, third the Phnom Penh no. Hello? Yeah. Uh, thirdly, Mr. President, uh, the Phnom Penh attack contemplated uh, targeting and killing Pol Pot This is not all. However, an additional 10 witnesses offered eyewitness accounts of the second half of the plan. They say that while attacking Phnom Penh, the internal collaborators simultaneously control the and as I have already mentioned before, uh, there is extensive evidence linking Arunim to his in-law, Yisong Secretary Sao-Pin. And six of the witnesses also connect Sao-Pin's Yisong forces to the plot, while others named Chan Chakrai and Finally, there's also evidence that the Northwest uh, neighbor, was linked to this part of the Of course, the Northwest zone, like Division 310, was ideally situated to carry out this aspect of the attack. The Northwest Zone was the backbone of the CPK rice production and was expected to produce up to one third of DK's rice uh, during every year of the CPK's four-year plan. And together with autonomous sector 106 and the ESO, these three areas occupied great lengths of Cambodia's border with Thailand, Thailand, Laos, and Vietnam, and could surround the CPK and block many further routes of entry and exit. The witness testimony confirms that the nationwide attack had two military objectives. First, the internal collaborators would deplete the CPK's nationwide capabilities. And second, they would seize vital territory stretching from the northernmost parts of the country sweeping downward in an arch headed towards Phnom Penh. And upon arriving in Phnom Penh, their efforts would join those of Division 310 and the East Zone carrying out the Phnom Penh attack. And thus, and thus united, the traitors would crush the CPK leadership and legitimate the DK government. The available evidence does not merely show that there were extensive plans for 1977. The 19 witnesses in total and other evidence, of course, show that widespread steps were taken to actually prepare to give effect to the plot. These efforts included sabotage and subversion extensive stockpiling and meetings and recruitment drives. And despite the dire conditions facing Cambodia when the CPK took power, Vietnam's collaborators sought to worsen those conditions through sabotage. 
And this is, for instance, why CPK Minister for Social Affairs, observed that there was something wrong, unquote, in the zone, an observation that led to a court to form an investigation. Several witnesses testified at trial about his investigation, and one confirmed that he received instructions from the Ministry about it. Two witnesses detailed that the zone had stockpiled rice for so long, it had spoiled, and that food was withheld. And contrary to the co-prosecutor's suggestions in their brief, uh, the witnesses did not confirm that much of the rice was sent to Phnom Penh. There is also evidence that stockpiles were deliberately destroyed. A Northwest Zone Hospital Director, Chan Savut, who was interviewed by Chan Savut and Rob Lenton, described personally destroying medicine supplies. He and another interviewee also confirmed that the Northwest Zone burned rice supplies rather than let the Southwest Zone have it. And further evidence describes how, for instance, an ammunition depot was destroyed in the Central Zone. And this Chan Savut also spoke about how Nim waged, quote-unquote, psychological war in the Northwest Zone, complaining about conditions and the absence of money and markets to steer up, to steer up Another witness confirmed to this chamber that Moon Nim eventually printed and began using currency in the Northwest, including to pay salaries. In addition, Chancellor described how under orders from Moon Nim, soldiers in autonomous sector one of six staged fake clashes at the Thai border to make it look like troops were battling defectors and thus two occupied to be, uh, two occupied to be redeployed. And the defector told the Far Eastern Economic uh, Review that troops in the autonomous uh, sector um, also stopped planting mines to secure the border. Mr. President, and finally, had Heng Samrin or Prime Minister Hun Sen testified, I believe they could have verified evidence suggesting that they had begun disobeying orders while remaining part of the CPK. For instance, the biography of Hun Sen, written by a Vietnamese intelligence after he had gone to Vietnam, suggests that in June 1977, Hun Sen refused orders to engage in combat with Vietnam. But beyond these two men, there is also widespread evidence of deviations from official CPK policies, as we will discuss throughout our today's presentation. The evidence also shows that already from 1975, Onwards, Vietnam's collaborators had prepared to effectuate the 1977 coup through widespread stockpiles of a range of factors. Two witnesses who appeared in this court confirmed that they had personally transported weapons as part of the vision. Preparation for a coup. A company commander in the division said that troops had been ordered to quote prepare artillery and small arms to attack unquote. And the combatant said that they had prepared to take over tank, marine, and aircraft capacity and had already drawn their weapons, which another combatant. Confirmed seeing. The situation was the same uh, in the northwest. 
told to him to testify that he had built a cache of 20,000 weapons seized from Khmer Republic forces. Chance of Wood described seeing convoys transporting guns and stockpiling of tanks, personnel carriers, trucks, artillery, small arms, and petrol. And Two former Northwest Song cadres testified in court about new uniforms being distributed in the zone. One of them, Chon Vaughan, Chon Vaughan, said that he escorted Rumin to collect those uniforms from Vietnam at the border. And witnesses also described also described as detailed in our brief, stockpiling of extensive additional supplies, including clothes, caps, hammocks, rice, sugar, and fish, both of forces in Phnom Penh and in the North Zone. Finally, Mr. President, there were efforts to hold clandestine meetings and recruitment drives in preparation for the 1977 coup. And in addition to the May 1975 meeting in Phnom Penh, which I have already discussed, and in which Plan A was set in motion, Witnesses described how Division 310 and other commanders held various meetings around Phnom to brief them on rebellion plans, including one attended by 500 people and another one attended by an entire battalion. It was always emphasized at these meetings that the plans had to be carried out in the utmost secrecy. In the case of Phnom there is also evidence of meetings in the northwest zone from late 1976. In particular, Chan Sevu described attending a secret meeting in the forest in Batambang, attended not only by Runim, but also by one of the hundred ranking military officials from the zone. At this meeting, he said, Runim described the quote-unquote secret plan, and Von Vett added that they could appeal to outside help if needed. And another witness uh, testified in this court that he attended a meeting with Davao and announced to members of the mobile units that they were now all captains, presumably within the Chinese forces. Finally, the uh, present recruitment efforts were strenuously underway. John Zahut mentioned, for instance, that up to 30,000 people were recruited from local uh, from locals and mobile uh, work in the zone. Uh, let me wrap up the uh, failed 1977 coup. Of course, it's clear ultimately the 1977 coup also failed. But it's worth noting, however, that even in the face of this most existential threat, the evidence shows that the standing committee still exercised considerable caution and restraints. The 1977 coup was ultimately thwarted following monitor monitoring and investigations from CPK. For instance, as I will mention later in the context of uh, Division 310 Commander Un was tracked for two to three months before being eventually arrested. Indeed, 
several witnesses testified that half of the blood was discovered. They were simply transferred to perform other regular military duties, such as farming or constructing dumping dumps on While some reported not having anything happened at all. Ultimately, the evidence clearly establishes Vietnam's internal collaborators were planning and preparing for a coup in 1977. This evidence also makes it crystal clear that leaders and forces in zones and autonomous sectors could and did act wholly independently of new interests and at purposes opposite to the legitimate and lawful policies of the CPK. And the CPK's response to such treason was likewise in itself perfectly lawful. Let me now, Mr. President, turn to the 1978 coup Following the failure of the 77 coup, the Vietnam, Vietnam's collaborators in the East have decided to up the ante, attempting to stage another coup, probably on or around 25 May 1978. As we know, this event ended dramatically in the suicide of one of the top leaders of the trade And the account of the 1978 coup has been completely distorted by the media narrative. In this particular segment, I will quickly revisit the events of this infamous coup and correct this infamous key aspects. Uh, First, the 1978 coup was not the final step of a ban of freedom fighters against a monstrous regime. It was a calculated plan by traitors sponsored by Vietnam to achieve Vietnam's imperialist ambitions. Sources from Vietnam's ally, ally East Germany, the Hanoi sources, quote-unquote, disclosed to Nguyen Chan Nam and a 1986 monograph cited by academics and former the the it is, of course, no coincidence that Prime Minister Hun Sen, one of the defectors, returned to DK inside a Vietnamese tank and was accompanied by Vietnamese troops already in December 1977. The second point is that Sao Pei was not at all some hapless ដោយដែលលទ្ធិមានដំណើរនិងគ្មានសិទ្ធិសម្រេចដោយដែលលទ្ធិមានដំណើរនិងគ្មានសិទ្ធិសម្រេចដោយដែលលទ្ធិមាន
Hai dah la wai wai krup yang terbang kong 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 Heng Samrin, had he been summoned to testify, could have described how he was appointed by Saul Pin to be the leader of the military forces organized for the coup. And during these preparations, assistance and support were given by Vietnam. As it was recognized by Vietnam's collaborators that they would not succeed without external help. Mr. President, after the Vietnamese government 